Hello, uh, my name's Cole, and I'll be giving you a brief rundown on creating a level 4 nexus using CryEngine 3. Um, the level we will be focusing on today is a 1v1 map called Annex. So, everything starts with the design of a blue room. Um, and this is just a super bare bones map um, where the main focus is gameplay. You want to think about placement of game rule objects such as jump pads, weapon placement, teleporters. Um, at this stage you want to test your layout as much as possible and try and work out anything you think might be an issue regarding movement and asset placement. Once that's sorted out, um, you're going to want to move on to the blackout stage. Um, and at this point you want to decide on an appropriate concept for the level as a whole. Um, this is great for starting the visual design process. Uh, you know, try not to constrain yourself to small ideas. Uh, think of some large shapes that would define the level as a whole and potentially help drive fiction as you work. In this case, a large cannon was created to give um, Annex a purpose. I find that this implied fiction really helps work through any sort of artist block you find yourself running into. Um, if you don't know it's a create for a certain area, a certain hallway, um, you know, just think back to what you've established as your main concept and try and think what would make sense pertaining to that. From here, the modeling begins. I find it's best to use a gray material and work from large to small. Balance and shape distribution are going to be your main focus. Try and iron out anything that's going to be awkward visually or awkward for player movement. All that should be dealt with. And, you know, don't be afraid to chamfer or bevel, but remember you're going to have to define a UV coordinate for every single polygon you create. So work smarter and not harder. One of the advantages of building maps for arena combat gameplay uh, is the map can almost be 100% UV geometry. And so because of this, you can feasibly build a map that uses zero modular pieces. However, building everything unique isn't always the best approach. It's always good to identify what can be a repeated asset to best take advantage of your time and general memory consumption. Uh, additionally, a handful of universal assets were created for Nexus to span across the maps. These occupy a specific spatial footprint that were built using a grid. In this case, door frames were built to fill a standardized measurement, so it was important to mirror this measurement for use when building the larger pieces. Once the world mesh has been completed, the next step is apply textures. Annex uses 12 separate materials that are assigned via a multi-sub object material in CryEngine. The most important of these textures is the trim texture. All of the trims exist on one texture sheet to reduce draw calls and they are designed to tile along a single axis. The model needs to be created with this texture in mind as bending the UV strips into a straight line is essential for grounding the other materials. Finally, adding the universal assets in place brings the level to a near completion. At this stage, attention to where detail is needed can be dealt with on a per model basis. It's always good to play with lighting as you work to get an idea of where things are headed, um, but generally lighting is one of the last things you'll touch. Uh, lighting really helps add that extra final polish at the end. Since CryEngine is real time, you can add and adjust lights on the fly. Just make sure to keep an eye on the overdraw costs, too many lights can be costly. So, that was the brief rundown on creating level art for Nexus. Um, hopefully you got something out of it, and I hope you feel motivated to make a map of your own.